Hello everyone and welcome to another video and today we will be working the 2009 multiple choice paper and remember if this video is for you please 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 ensure that you're learning and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe as we all try to prepare for it. In working today's question you will realize that a lot of the questions from the past papers that we have did tend to repeat so therefore if you want detailed working or more comprehensive working and explanation you can just visit the other links that will be in the description and you will see some of these questions that are repeated but i'll still try as best as possible to go through each question so number one states negative three square plus negative two square remember when you square a negative number it always becomes positive so negative three square becomes positive nine plus negative two square becomes positive four. So nine plus four is equal to 13. So therefore answer for number one is C. So we're moving right along. Number two, written in scientific notation, 0 0.045 times 10 to the negative three is. So remember with scientific notation, which is similar to significant figures, it's always trying to write numbers that are too large or too small to a decimal so therefore 0 0.045 already has a power which is 10 to the negative 3 and we'll move in the decimal point two more places to the right so it now becomes 10 to the negative 5 so it is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 based on the direction in which we're moving so therefore 2 is b so number three states what percentage of 30 is 6 so we can wear this two ways or more but you can look at it as saying either 6 over 30 multiplied by 100 or you can look at it 30 is equal to 100 percent and 6 is equal to x which is the percentage which we're trying to find so we can cross multiply to make x the subject of the formula and it becomes 6 multiplied by 100 and all of that is divided by 30 so therefore x is equal to 600 divided by 30 and x is equal to 20 percent so our answer for three is c so number four 11.1 .1 divided by 0 0.01 is equal to so with division of decimal numbers you can change the divisor to a whole number and the same number of places you move the decimal point is the same number of times you will move it in the dividend so in this case it will become we'll move the decimal point in the divisor two places so it becomes one so we'll move the decimal point in the dividend two times as well so it will become 1110 divided by one and that is equal to 1110 so our answer for number four is d number five if 560 dollars is shared in the ratio two to three to nine then the difference between the largest and the smallest shares is so what we can do is just simply add the ratio that the money is divided into so it's equal to 2 plus 3 plus 9 and that is equal to 14 so what we can find is what is one share equal to so if 560 dollars is equal to 14 share what is one share so one so what we're trying to find is x how much is x dollars so x which is equal to one share we cross multiply to make x the subject of the formula and it becomes 560 dollars multiplied by one and all of that is divided by 14 so therefore x is equal to 560 dollars divided by 14 and x is equal to 40 dollars so the question is asked the difference between the largest and the smallest share so therefore the largest share would be 9 multiplied by the $40 and that is equal to 360 and the smaller share is 2 multiplied by the same $40 and that is equal to 80 so therefore the difference would then be 360 minus $80 and that is equal to $280 so our answer for 5 is C so we're moving right along guys 
So number six states, if 60% of a number is 90, what is the number? So we're again looking at a percentage change. So 60% of a number is 90. So what is the number? So the original number would then occupy the 100% slot. So we cross multiply to make X the subject of the formula and it becomes 100 multiplied by 90. And all of that is divided by 60. So therefore X is equal to 9,000 divided by 60 and x is equal to 150 when you do the division so therefore 6 is c moving right along so number 7 what is the value of the digit in the number 48.621 so therefore remember with numbers behind the decimal places start at tenth hundredth thousandth so it becomes 2 over 100 as it occupied the hundredth position. So therefore, our answer for 7 is A. There's no need to simplify as the 2 over 100 is given as one of the possible answers. So we can just select A and move right along. Number 8, the number 301 can be written as. So it would be 1s, 10s, 100. So therefore, it is equal to... 3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 2 are 3 times 100 it is the same thing so it's 3 times 10 raised to the power of 2 plus 0 I should put these in brackets so I'm just go back brackets and then 0 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 1 plus 1 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 0 still is 3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 2 and if you know any number raised to the power of 1 is the number so therefore 10 raised to the power of 1 is 10 but any number that is multiplied by 0 is 0 so therefore that would be 0 plus any number raised to the power of 0 is 1 so therefore 1 times 10 to the 0 becomes 1 multiplied by 1 so that is 1 so therefore our answer will be 3 multiplied by 10 to the 2 plus 1 so our answer for it is a so remember any number raised to the power of one is the number and any number raised to the power of zero is one so once you remember that you will be good for questions like these so number nine if three n is an odd number which of the following is an even number this is a question that we work so you can check the link in the description below for 2005 paper so what we can do is use it in a practical sense. Therefore, 3n is an odd number. So we can substitute n for any number which would result in an odd number. So let's just use for an easy sake 1. So 3 multiplied by 1 is equal to 3. So that fulfills the criteria of 3n being an odd, being an odd number. So which of the following is an even number? So what you'll do is multiply out all these answers and see which one would result in an even number and the one that would result in an even number is c as we'll have 313 minus 1 to give us 2 all the others would still result in an odd number and that is how we know that our answer is c so remember even numbers are numbers that are easily divisible by 2 so therefore when 2 is divided into these numbers they do not leave a remainder Number 10, what is the least number of plums that can be shared equally among 6, 9, or 12 children? So what we're looking for is the LCM for all these numbers, the least common multiples. So this question was worked in the 2013 papers. So you can check the link in the description below. But what you'll need to do is write out the multiples for 6, the multiples for 9, the multiples for 12 up to a certain point, and then look at the number that reoccurs first in all three 
numbers and you'll see that that will be 36 and that will be our least common multiple. So number 11, in the Venn diagram, the shaded area represents, so we're looking for everything except P. So therefore, A saying not P, so that small apostrophe that is above P means not. So A saying not P, so therefore everything else. So therefore, A is our answer. And you can confirm this by looking at the other answers. For example, so C and D are just looking at the intersection and union of Q and P, but other areas are also shaded outside of Q and P, which should be the outer region of these two circles. And that is how we know that A is our answer. B is looking at not the union of P and Q. So our answer remains A. So which of the following sets is equivalent to A, B, C, D? So if I remember, I stated this on the 2005 paper, set is equivalent when it contains the same number of elements. So it's one, two, three, four elements, and therefore one, two, three, four elements, which is C as C is the only answer that contains four elements. So set is equivalent when it contains the same number of elements. So 13, in the Venn diagram, number of elements of P is 5. So it's 5 minus X, as it did not say uh, P only. In Q, it's 9 minus X. And the union is 10. So union is 10. And we're trying to find the intersection, which in this case would be x. And this that is the reason why we minus x from the 5 and x from the 9. So we're trying to find what x is. And the union is 10. So it's 10 is equal to 5 minus x plus x, the intersection, plus 9 minus x. So 10 is equal to 5 plus 9 as these two first x's cancel, the negative and the positive. So it becomes 5 plus 9 minus x. So 10 is equal to 14. 14 comes from the 9 plus 5 minus x. x is equal to 14 minus 10 and x is equal to 4. So our answer for 13 is A. We're moving right along. So therefore, 14 in the Venn diagram, if P equal factors of 6 and Q equal factors of 4, then the shaded region represents. So we'll need to write out the factors for 6 the factors to 4 and we're looking for the intersection. Intersection would be any number that is common in both sets and when you write that out you'll see that the answer for that is B. You can check the 2013 paper for the working out for that as it was done and that is in the link is in the description below. 15. The simple interest on $400 at 5% per annum for two years is. So remember simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time and all of that is divided by 100 and in this case we're looking for the simple interest so it becomes the principal which is 400 multiplied by 5 which the rate and the time which is two years divided by 1 100. So our answer 415 is A. And always remember that your time is written in years. So moving right along. If P suites cost Q cents, then the cost of one suite is. So P suites cost Q cents. So what is the cost for one suite? So we're looking for what? X is a cross multiply to make X the subject of the formula. It is one multiplied by Q and all of that is divided by P. Q times one will leave us with Q. So X is equal to Q divided by P and therefore D is our answer for 16. But you can also look at it in a practical sense. If 10 sweets cost 30 cents then what is the cost for one suite the only way you can do it is to divide the 30 cents divided by the amount of sweets that you bought and then you could just substitute the cents and the sweets for the p and the q and you'll see that you'll arrive 
at the same answer. 17. During a sale, a shop allows 20% discount of the marked price of clothing. What will a customer pay for a dress with a marked price of $30? So what we're looking for is 20% of $30. And 20% of $30, which is the discount price, is equal to $6. So therefore, what the customer will pay will be the $30 minus the discounted price of $6 and that would equal to $24 and that is the price that the customer will be paying for the clothing. So question 18, we're moving right along guys. Tom bought a pen for $60 and sold it to gain 20% on his cost price. How much money did he gain? So what we're looking for is a profit. We are looking for the profit, the profit, the profit. So it would be 20% of $60, right, is his profit and 20% of $60 is $12 and therefore our answer is A. 19. Susan bought a calculator for $120. She had to pay a sales tax of $10 on the price. How much change would she receive from $100? and $40. So Susan bought a calculator for $120 and had to pay a sales tax of 10%. So it is $120 multiplied by the 10% sales tax which she paid which is $12. So therefore the total that she paid for the calculator would be the $120 plus the tax which should bring it to $132 and she gave the cashier $140 so therefore the change that she would receive would be $140 minus $132 and that would equal to $8 and therefore our answer is A which is the change that she would receive. In Mary invested $200 for 3 years at 5% per annum. John invested $300 at the same rate. If they both received the same amount of money in interest, how many years did John invest this money? This was working on the 2005 paper and the 2013. You can check the 2013 link for a detailed working. But what we're doing is find the interest amount for Mary first because the question stated that both John and Mary receive the same amount of money in interest. So remember, simple interest is equal to principal times rate times time. So we have everything that could work out the simple interest for Mary. So it would be equal to the 200 multiplied by the rate of 5% multiplied by the time of three years and all of that is divided by 100 and when you do the calculation you'll get $30. So $30 is a simple interest that she received and now we're looking for what is the how long did John invest is $300 that he received the same interest of $30 at the, the same rate per annum so it becomes 30 so we're transposing to make time the subject of the formula so it would become 30 multiplied by 100 and all of that will be divided by the principal 300 times the rate of 5%. So therefore T is equal to 3000 divided by 1500 and T is equal to 2. So our answer 420 is B. So thank you for joining us for part 1 and do come back for part 2 and 3.